السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دس از نہار فریڈی اینڈ یو آر واچنگ مائی سیکنڈ ویڈیو لیکچر آن فنیٹکس اوکے فرینڈس وٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈو ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹیک سم ایکسپلینیشنس اینڈ آنسرس ٹو دیز تھنگس یو سی دیم آن اسکرین اسپیچ آرگنس Sound production system like respiratory stage, phanetry stage, articulatory stage and uh, it's a human body with different organs in it. Actually, uh, their main role is biological, but uh, these organs also play their role in the production of sounds. We will come to know about their role, how they play their role. when we are going to discuss uh, different stages of sound production mechanism. But uh, simply you can say that uh, lungs, they produce energy for the production of sound. Actually energy is produced in the lungs, what we call it airstream is coming to trachea, then it is pushed up to larynx where it gets modified from larynx, it comes into either mouth cavity or nasal cavity and then into open ear. This is how the sound production mechanism work, but it's not that much simple as it looks. It needs a bit of explanation. So let's get started off with explanation. If you are ready, we can describe speech organs and their role in the production of sounds under three systems. The first one is respiratory system. The second one is the phanetry system. The third one is the articulatory system. Okay. The respiratory stage. The organ of this stage, the fast organ of this stage is uh, lungs. Actually, uh, what happens in lungs that uh, breathing or respiration takes place in lungs. When we are taking air in, it is called inhalation. And when we taking it out, this is called exhalation. So this is basically respiration. Respiration is of two type, when we are taking oxygen in or out. Actually, uh, lungs are very important because uh, they provide the uh, energy source for the sounds. What is that energy source? We call it airstream. So this uh, airstream is very, very important for the production of sounds. No airstream, no production of sound. Actually, the airstream that is coming out of lungs, that is very important in the production of uh, many sounds of different languages is called pulmonic aggressive airstream. Actually, it is coming out of the lungs. Pulmonic means uh, lungs so actually uh, this is what happens in the lungs when we are taking oxygen in or when we are taking oxygen out you are taking in this is inhalation when you're taking oxygen or air stream out this is called exhalation it's trachea sometimes called the windpipe it's the second organ of a respiratory stage. What is the function of this organ? Actually, it's a kind of tube that links uh, lungs to larynx. And uh, besides it, uh, what happens here? The transportation of air stream takes place like uh, air travels in and out through this pipe. The sound energy that was produced in the lungs travels all the way up to the larynx through trachea. And when it comes to the larynx, it has to go through some modifications, some changes. We can simply say that uh, what happens to the airstream in the larynx, this process is called the phanetry system. So how many organs are there in phanetry system? The pharynx and the vocal cords. Larynx is uh, actually the fast place of uh, airflow interaction. 
It's a kind of uh, bony box-like structure located in the throat, uh, quite visible in men's throat. It is also called Adam's apple. Inside uh, larynx uh, is a pair of lip-like structure called vocal cords or vocal folds. You can see them uh, white strips running horizontally. These are vocal cords. They are very important as far as the sound production is concerned. Why is it so? Because the airstream that was uh, produced in the lungs comes here for modification, for change. Actually, at the moment uh, of vocal cords uh, bring a kind of change, bring a kind of modification in the airstream that comes from lungs. And that modification is basically the main source for the production of sounds. Furthermore, vocal cords can be found in different positions, in different states. These are two important positions of vocal cords. Actually, figure to the right of the screen shows a vocal cord with wide opening. This wide opening is called uh, glottis. So when the air stream travels through this wide opening, it causes no vibration in the vocal cords. So the sound made with no vibration in the vocal cords is called wisely sound. Example is sound. Look at the figure to the left. What we see, we see uh, narrowed glottis and tightly drawn vocal cords. So what happens when the air stream travels there? It will cause vibration in vocal cords. So the sound made with vibration in vocal cords are called voiced sounds. Examples are V and D. What we have been talking about is actually the journey of airstream from lungs up to the larynx. Uh, we discussed that uh, respiration takes place in the lungs, then uh, airstream is pushed up to the larynx for modification. Modification means getting some frequencies and tones. The same journey continues about the larynx until it gets uh, resonated and becomes a kind of uh, clear speech sound. Now we are going to discuss uh, articulatory system. Actually organs about the larynx are called articulators and the passage about the larynx is called a vocal tract. Vocal tract can further be divided into two tracts, nasal tract and oral tract. We'll discuss it later. Okay, look at this figure for the names and places of articulators. Because we are not going to discuss these articulators right now. We will throw light on these articulators when we discuss the place of articulation. But one articulator that was not clear in the previous figure is this one. What's this? Is it a frog? No. It's a tongue. Look at your friends. Uh, you see um, this tongue with uh, how many parts? With five parts. Tip, blade, front, back, and root. These parts of the tongue are very, very important in the production of many consonant sounds. You'll come to know of them with the passage of time. One thing more to discuss before we say goodbye and ta-ta. And that's uh, oral and nasal cavities or oro-nasal process. What is actually meant by it? It means that uh, whether air travels through mouth or nose before it goes into outside atmosphere or environment. Okay. You see velum in the figure. When it is raised, so the passage to nasal cavity is blocked. So airstream is forced to travel through mouth. And when it happens, 
sounds produced there, those sounds are called oral sounds. But if a velum or soft palate is lower, so what happens? Passage to oral cavity is blocked and the air goes through nose and sounds produced there are called nasal sounds. Take the examples of uh, p and n. Feel the vibration in your nose while pronouncing n.